Well, welcome back. Governor Mary Fallon is term limited and cannot seek re-election, so that means new leadership is coming in January. Today, we talked to each of the three gubernatorial candidates ahead of Election Day on November 6th. And joining me now is Democratic candidate Drew Edmondson. Mr. Edmondson, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, certainly. Well, the state budget continues to be an issue. Projections earlier this year show that the Oklahoma Office of Management and Enterprise Services projected about a $167 million shortfall number kind of fluctuated a little bit, but Rome wasn't built in a day, but if you were elected, what would you do to try to alleviate that issue? Well, we're going to take advantage of the $400 million in, a, in additional revenue that was passed during the special session back in April. In addition to that, to meet the further needs of education, I've proposed several tax measures. One of them is putting the gross production tax back at 7% where it used to be. Uh, another is making capital gains subject to income tax, which it used to be. Uh, we reduced it on an experiment. The experiment didn't work. We need to put it back. And the third is to get the additional 50 cents uh, a pack on cigarettes. It was originally introduced to increase the price per pack by $1.50. It passed at a dollar. I think we need the other 50 cents. The latest data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics show that half of the counties in our viewing area is above the unemployment rate in Oklahoma. If elected, how can Oklahoma bring back jobs to the state, and what is your plan to bring jobs specifically to southeastern Oklahoma? Well, southeastern Oklahoma specifically should capitalize on its wonderful water resources at, you know, as a tourist attraction uh, for recreation and destination tourism, for that matter. Uh, you combine the uh, Indian casinos with the water, uh, the sports that are available, and you've got some real attractions down here. But along with the rest of the state, we need to work on economic development. We need to work on uh, assisting uh, existing businesses to expand and encouraging new businesses to come in. Education is one of the keys to that. Health is one of the keys to that. A fairly obscure key to that whole thing is uh, uh, broadband internet, making sure it's available in every section of the state. It probably is here in Durant, but it may not be everywhere in Bryan County. So we need to make sure that's available as an asset for prospective businesses. It appears that the teacher walkout was a big turning point with the state of Oklahoma and the state of education in Oklahoma. There was the passage of House Bill uh, 1010XX by Governor Mary Fallon, described as the largest teacher pay raise in the state's history. Two-part question for you. Do you agree with that passage of that bill and also with southeastern Oklahoma being so rural? We've seen consolidation, closures of schools, going to four-day-a-week operational schedules. What's your plan for the state of Oklahoma with education? Well, number one, I commend the legislature on what it did in April. It was less than what was needed, but it was more than had been done you know, for decades. So I would thank them for that, but there's more work to do. Uh, they passed just over $400 million in additional taxes. Uh, the teachers were saying we need at least 800 to 900 million. Step up Oklahoma, which was mostly business people and mostly Republican for that matter, said we needed at least 700 million in new revenue. We got just over 400, so we've got a ways to go. Uh, the three measures that I've talked about would generate in excess of 300 million, which would meet the target that was set by Step Up Oklahoma. So I, I feel comfortable that this is not a, a pipe dream. This is not a, uh, a far left measure. This is a responsible measure, uh, and it's embraced by business people, both Democrats and Republicans. And with rural school districts, there's rural hospitals in southeastern Oklahoma. I believe the Oklahoma had a statistic that between 2009 and 2013, about 56 percent of rural hospitals operated at a financial loss. So what are your plans for health care, specifically for those in southeastern Oklahoma with the rural hospitals? Well, I intend to opt into the Medicaid expansion, which would put about a billion dollars in additional funding into Oklahoma specifically for health care. Now, 100 million of that billion would come from the state, but I am told reliably 
that if you inject that much money into the economy, we will at least recoup the 10% match and probably more than that. Uh, people need to keep in mind that this money is not going to individuals. It's not a check. Uh, it goes to hospitals and clinics and medical providers who provide care to individuals that we have made eligible for the Medicaid expansion. Just like the entire state of Oklahoma, southeastern Oklahoma relies heavily on agriculture. What are your thoughts on the state of agriculture and how can you improve it if elected? Well, I, I think uh, agriculture is very important, not only uh, the plants that are grown, uh, particularly wheat in northwestern Oklahoma, but also animal agriculture. And that includes hog operations, cattle operations, and poultry operations. Uh, the one thing that we need to take care of uh, particularly in terms of the hog farms and the poultry houses is that the waste is disposed of responsibly. And as long as that's done, uh, then we should be promoting even large-scale animal agriculture as much as we possibly can. But it, it is, would be particularly important in southeastern Oklahoma that we not allow that to foul the uh, rivers and streams that could be so important to recreation and growth. And what are your thoughts on the passage of medical marijuana and the potential for a state question of recreational marijuana? Yeah, I, I announced ahead of time that I intended to vote for the medical marijuana. I thought the science was in on that. There were legitimate medical uses for cannabis and the extracts, uh, in, either including or not including uh, THC, tetrahydrocannabinol. The, uh, the case on recreational, I, I don't think we're there yet. We have the opportunity to follow the track record of Colorado and Oregon and Washington and other states uh, that have legalized it. And if we do put it on the ballot in Oklahoma, make sure that the things that those states are doing right are in the measure and make sure the things that may have been mistakes in those other states are not in the measure, that we avoid uh, the pitfalls that some of the other states may have fallen into. Uh, so I would urge caution and uh, a, a period of time to monitor to make sure that we are going to do it right if we do it. Uh, but I have pledged that if the citizens of the state of Oklahoma vote yes, that I will implement it and not frustrate it, uh, that will become the law. Another reason to wait is I believe we're pretty close to the federal government deciding that they've got to do something to relieve the banks because the, whether it's medical marijuana or recreational marijuana, it's a cash business because federally insured banks are, are not getting involved. They're, they're opting on the side of caution. But uh, when you've got over 30 states that have already legalized either recreational or medicinal, uh, the pressure on Congress to do the right thing and uh, fix that problem is going to be pretty huge. Well, Mr. Edmondson, thank you so much for coming in, sharing your time and your views. We definitely appreciate it. And coming up, we will hear from Libertarian candidate Chris Powell when we return. Um.